வசுதேவசுதம் தேவம் கம்சச்சானோரமர்தனம் தேவகி பரமானந்தம் கிருஷ்ணம் வந்தே ஜகத்குரும் தமேவ மாதா ச பிதத்தமேவ தமேவ பந்துஷ சகத்தமேவ தமேவ வித்யாதிரவிடம் தமேவ தமேவ சர்வம் நமதேவ தேவ தமேவ சர்வம் ருதேவ தேவ ஐ ஓம் வி ஆர் டூயிங் நாவ் த லாஸ்ட் சாப்டர் ஆஃப் பஞ்சதசி தட் இஸ் தி ஃபிஃப்டீன் சாப்டர் and this chapter deals with the the brahmanande the vishayanandaha that means whatever the happiness that one gets by any process by the uh, objective happiness that everyone is going for or longing for because life itself is trying to get or trying to become happy and the all life struggles in the bottom line of it is essentially i want to be happy and i feel i am limited and i want that so that i complete myself therefore i want this i want that i want that so everyone like a rat race going after acquiring things or grandizing things so that they feel happy when they have it and the problem is the they have to struggle hard to get it and there is a struggle hard to maintain it and struggle hard when you when you lose it so every, including starting from the wealth so acquiring wealth is a problem maintaining the wealth is a problem and problem will be if you lose that wealth also so the all happiness that you get in the is related to the mental state of a human being ultimately if the mind or the vritti the life form where the all pervading akhanda ekarasatmakam atma that is the pure consciousness infiniteness which is ananda swarupam as though gets reflected in every one of them in the objects and in the inner objects only existent aspect is reflected everything else is absorbed in the subtle material both the existent and consciousness gets reflected but not the ananda ananda gets reflected when the subtle that is the mind becomes a calm and serene and that part of modification of the mind to be calm and serene is called shanti vrutti so in the case of shanti vrutti means the is that a the sattvic mind sattvic mind so you have a tamasic mind rajasic mind and a sattvic mind so evolution is going from a tamasic to rajasic to sattvic and that evolutionary process is essentially involved going slowly step by step and the qualities of the human being are based on the the three guna sattva rajas tamo guna so depending upon the guna you classify a human being as that's how chaturvid the 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 four ashramas are according to to krishna are based on guna karma vibhagayo on the based on guna and karma what they do with the what they have the three gunas are sattva guna rajo guna tamo guna and how they act because of those gunas that varies depending upon the proportion of these three so you have varieties and varieties of people behaviors even though these three are changing and just as they, you get different types of coffee even though there is only three ingredients at least from the point of the conventional coffees you have a coffee powder milk and sugar and these things vary from only three but each coffee is different from other coffee same way sattva rajo guna tri gunas and they vary and each variation you choose, human being thinking and and behavior differs because of these three they talk about what is santa guna santa guna sattvik satvik mind satvik mind rajasik mind chanto ghora and mudha and the tamasik mind or the manaso vrutta yastrada three types of types of broader classifications every human being will have all the three only proportion of it 
of one is more than the other. So one is not 100% sattvic or one is not 100% rajasic and one is not 100% tamasic. But proportion keeps changing and one is predominantly sattvic is the one goes after knowledge, goes after higher values and that is a shantapunam and shantaha vairagyam shanti audaryam ityadaha etc etc so so many of them are important in the qualification of what is shantaguna expressed as one is vairagyam he has no uh, either hatred or extreme like is is a if it comes it's okay if it doesn't come also he doesn't get unnecessarily agitated with all that. so that's called vairagya shanti is essentially forgiveness or compassion all that is part of the of the shanti audaryam audaryam is large heartedness and that is able to forgive other people's mistake also this is all ichajaha or shantavrutayaha there are sattvic thoughts in the mind. Now fourth is, so thought about the Brahman is a sattvic thought because to inquire into the absolute nature, you need a sattvic mind in order to inquire. So in the evolution, you develop a sattvic mind, that's what called purification of the mind, where purification is from tamasic to rajasic to sattvic and that sattvic mind has to be utilized in the inquiry because that's the only mind that is capable of using a discrimination, subtle discrimination between what is real and what is unreal. That's called viveka. So that is essentially part of a sattvic nature. Now he's talking about the, the rajasic and tamasic. Trishna sneha roga lobhau. Trishna sneho raga lobhau. Ichyadya gora vruttayaham. Ichyadya gora vruttayaham. Sammoho bhaya mitchyadyaha. Sammoho bhaya mitchyadyaha. Kadita muda vruttayaham. Kadita muda vruttayaham. Now he's classifying the other two. Trishna. Trishna means the, the, um, uh, inadequacy, feeling inadequacy, not inadequacy, feeling inadequacy. I want this, I want this. A strong desire to possess something because you feel inadequate as you are. It's called a intense, unsatisfactory desires. Trishna. And so everybody is going after because they have strong desires to possess it. And therefore, Trishna, intense, unsatisfying desires. Snehaha, here sneha means attachment, attachment, I want this, I want this, I want this. Why? Because uh, with that I am going to be happy, without that I am going to be. So intense longingness as well as the unsatisfactoriness with what I have and I feel so inadequate, I want to do something that is intense is also trishna. If it wants to do something for the benefit of the totality, then it's a different trishna. That is a, a, a mature Krishna, where I want it for my sake, not for other. So therefore, greediness and all that comes from that only. That's called Krishna, sneha, and raga sneha raga lobha. So raga, the the like liking things and lobha, greediness, all are part of rajasic nature. So whenever you have a, a tint of it, you know Rajasik Guna is coming in. Unsatisfactory desires, attachments and uh, likings and uh, lobha, greediness, ichyadeha, etc. etc. or ghora vruttayaha. Here ghora means not terrible. He is, he is, a, he is a Rajasik mind. Rajasik mind, restless mind. And that's what is the Rajasik. Tamasic mind is calm and serene mind. That is Tamasic. And Sammohaha, delusion, bhayam, fear, and Ichyajyaha, etc. Mudavruttayaha, they are Tamasic nature. So Tamasic nature is, there is so many that Krishna gives in the, in the 18th chapter and also in 17th chapter where the gunas and the qualities have been 
or discussed with procrastination and laziness are part of the 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 tamoguna and the uh, he, he gives in terms of tamoguna the actions and the on the works and all that or in the 18th chapter exhaustive details are provided and here is a summary this is sammohaha and bhaya 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 means fear for his own security and therefore security from everything else outside and because i want to survive that is the bhayam so dhiti yadyo bhayam bhavati as what the upanishad says udara mantaram kurute tasya bhayam bhavati a speck of difference contributes to the fear sammoha bhayam ichchadyaha etc are kathita are said by the scriptures as essentially moda vruttaya they are tamasic thoughts so what is a thought is classifying based on the thought texture of the thought quality of the thought the sattvic thought rajasic thought and tamasic thought and provided three classifications here in chapter 5 rutta ृत्तिश्वेतासु सर्वासु ऋत्तिश्वेतासु सर्वासु ब्रह्मणाश्चित स्वभावत ब्रह्मणाश्चित स्वभावत प्रतिबिंबत प्रतिबिंबति शांतासु प्रतिबिंबति शांतासु सुखं च प्रतिबिंबति सुखं च प्रतिबिंबति तगद वृत्तिश्वेसासु सर्वासु ब्रह्मणाश्चित स्वभावत प्रतिबिंबति शांतासु सुखं सुखं च प्रतिबिंबति सो एतु सर्वासु वृत्तिषु so that in these all these three thoughts as is the tamoguna thought the rajoguna thought and the sattvic thoughts brahmana of the brahman chit swabhava consciousness nature is there in all of them so not only the sat part in the in the inert material now any thought requires consciousness also because without being conscious of you cannot have any thought this is the the basic fundamental statement so where is the consciousness as a people are inquiring a scientist to want to find out where is the consciousness and he is looking for in the inner things of the consciousness inner things only existence is expressed for one to be conscious of he has to think and in the thought process consciousness is also expressed because unconscious entity cannot think therefore it said decartes says that i think therefore i am because i am able to think the capacity to think is the expression of the consciousness it's not a consciousness because i think therefore i am is his conclusion because i am therefore i can think is a conclusion of the upanishad because i am comes before the thinking process comes whereas the thinking is established by i am is only subsequent and here it says the sarvasu uttashu in a very thought consciousness so this is how the perception also takes place how do you know your thought thought has to be illumined by the consciousness for me to be conscious of the thought so consciousness is as though there and when the thought rises in the mind the consciousness which is all pervading that is satchidananda falls as though on the thought that is rising and gets reflected and reflection at goes to the mind and that reflected consciousness is what is the knowledge of the con- only when when the light gets reflected i see the object also so in the pitch dark room when i look at the object i don't see object why there is no light there that's what i say why why can't you see because i don't see there is no light here so when the light is on then i say object is there it's not that light is bringing the object light cannot bring the object object has to be there and but now light is shining on the object and light that falls on the object gets reflected and now i am conscious of the presence of the object 
So how do I become conscious of the presence of the object? Because I can see reflected light. Without the reflected light, I cannot see the presence of the object. Same way inside the mind occurs. So how do I know a thought? So thought is created when the perception occurs through the process of the indriyas the the jnanendriyas going and grasping and forming a vritti that's called thought so vritti is recognized the presence of the vritti is recognized only when the light of consciousness falls on it and gets reflected in the case of outside light i can have a situation where there's no light i can have pitch dark room therefore i say i don't see any any object but in the case of mind, I cannot say that because as long as the mind is there, as long as the thought is there, reflection will occur because the consciousness is always there. So it's always lighted all the time. So you cannot say there's no light for me, that for me, I cannot see. So if the thought arises, I can see because light is always there. So therefore, the consciousness that I am conscious of, when I say, how do you know I know my thoughts? Everybody knows their thoughts. Without you knowing that mind cannot think. So every thought is known. Every thought is known because it is basked by the, in the consciousness. And the consciousness is always there. As soon as the thought raises, reflection has to occur. As soon as the light is there, an object is there, reflection will occur. Because the light is falling on it. Unless you obstruct the light by something else. So you cannot obstruct the light of, light of consciousness because it is infinite. So infinite cannot be parted. So it's always there. And when it gets reflected, I had to see through my eyes for me to see object. Whereas in the case of of mind that as soon as the thought raises in the mind it will be reflected and I have to have the mind to see the reflection of the consciousness via the thought without the mind I cannot even think therefore thought and the mind together goes together as soon as the thought raises in the mind I am awake and therefore the mind is awake and therefore mind becomes conscious of the the presence of the of the thought and not only I know that I know the thought but consciousness illumining the thought content also when I see a chair not only I see an object there I see this is a chair and not a table why I say this is a chair and not a table because the the reflection that comes is coming with the characteristics of the chair and when the reflection from the table is coming with the with the some of the characteristics of the table which are different from the characteristic of the chair so i can differentiate the chair from the table based on the reflective characteristic of the chair versus reflective characteristic of the table see these are all simple but we take it for granted so if there is no chair or a table I say, is there a chair there? What do I say? He says, I don't see any chair here. So what do you do? I am seeing. What? Absence of a chair. Okay. So I will ask you, is there Gaga Boo Boo there? Of course, light is there. You cannot say, I cannot see it. Because light is there. But you can, what can you say? I don't know. I cannot see anything. What is Gaga Boo Boo? I will ask. So without knowing Gaga Boo Boo, I don't know whether Gaga Boo Boo exists there in that room or not. Because I have a prior knowledge of Gaga Boo Boo for me to know whether the Gaga Boo Boo is there. Okay, if you say, oh, that is Gaga Boo Boo, but he said it's not there. Oh, that's a chair. Why are you calling it as a Gaga Boo Boo? Oh, you call it a chair. I call it a Gaga Boo Boo. So that's a different language. But if I don't know what it is, so what is the knowing of means I should have an object with attributes that I can differentiate that which is different from any other object which is not a Gaga Boo Boo then I know in advance that this is a Gaga Boo. So if you go and say so go and meet Mr. Rama Rao in the, in the train station 
I don't know which is Rama Rao. Okay, Rama Rao looks five feet or six, five feet six inches tall. He is a very handsome man. He is a very well-groomed person with a tip-top dress, and he'll be looking for someone. And he is arriving in this train, and you meet him, and this is in the platform. So I got all the descriptions of. That means the attributive content of Mr. Rama Rao, and I go to the train station looking for Rama Rao. This guy is short; he is not Rama Rao. That guy is too tall; he is not Rama Rao. Neti neti, not this one Rama Rao, not that one Rama Rao. At last, I find a person who is of that description of the height. Is he wearing a the dress? Yes, these. Or other one is not wearing, so he is not Rama Rao. So he has one attribute, but the other attribute is not matching. So I am looking for a person that matches most of the attributes of this Rama Rao that I got. So what I am looking for an object with an attribute which I can identify. If I don't know Gaga Bubu, then I need to know what the attribute. Gaga Bubu is five feet tall and wears a good dress and is arriving in the in the train station. Go and meet. So I have Rama Rao or Rama Bubu. One of them will be coming there. So anyway, so what it amounts to is for me to know, I should have clear attributes of that, and that is essentially Rutti Shwe is also Sarvabhasu. So all Rutti, all the the thoughts in that rises in the mind has its ingredient consciousness because I am conscious of. The every thought that rises in the mind, whether it's a sattvic thought or a rajasic thought or a tamasic thought, as long as they rise in the mind, I am conscious of because consciousness, which is ever present, is boom beaming through. Who is consciousness? I am. I am the consciousness that is illumining the thought. Rutishvesasa sarvasu brahmana chitso havataha. So, Ehitu Sarvasu Ruttishu, therefore in all these thoughts, Brahmanaha of the Brahman, Sit Svabhavataha, because of the nature of consciousness it is Brahman, who says so? Who says that Sit is consciousness of Brahman? So why are you bringing Brahman here? I am only conscious of the thoughts, where is the Brahman? He says, now I go back to scriptures, and scripture says, Prajnanam Brahma, consciousness is Brahman. So wherever there is a consciousness, that is Brahman. Are you conscious? Yes, you are Brahman. End of the story. So I don't think so. That's your problem. Not problem is scripture tells. The scripture says, you are infinite, because you are conscious. Consciousness is infinite because you take yourself what you are not, and then say I am not infinite because you are taking the body, mind, intellect as I am, and that is the different problem. So you are superimposing your ignorance and say rejecting the what Scripture says. Scripture points out the truth, absolute truth, and I should have clear faith in the Scriptures until I abide in the knowledge. Truth. Rutteshvu, Rutteshvasu, Sarvasu, Brahmana, Chitsvabhavataha. So, if the nature of Chitsvabhavataha, consciousness nature. Pratibim, Pratibimbati, Santasu, Sukancha, Pratibimbati. So, Pratibimbati, Santasu. So, it gets reflected in the Santasu, in the Sattvic thoughts and Sukancha Pratibhimbati in the reflection of the consciousness in the in the in the in the sattvic thoughts, Sukancha Pratibhimbati, the happiness also gets reflected. So this is what the essence of the the statement. I say pure Satchidananda is always there. It is of the nature of limitless and when the the when it gets reflected in the thought process, but not all thought process in the shanti in the in the sattvic thoughts, then ananda also gets reflected. What is shanti thoughts? Shanti is again say vairagyam, shanti, audaryam. When I have those qualities that 
I have. That means expanding my mind. Chitta Vishalata. Chitta, the ekagrata at the same time Chitta Vishalata, where pure happiness gets reflected in the process and that is essentially consciousness nature itself and that is pratibhimbita and therefore shantasu in the sattvic thoughts there is sukhancha pratibhimbati the happiness also gets reflected that means when the when the when there is a sattvic thoughts mind becomes a serene and contemplative that means it is clear in terms of agitation less where the knowledge can take place knowledge requires a calm quiet mind and not just a calm quiet mind at that time the scripture knowledge has to be required say so that is in fact is brahman so Saman is not the lack of happiness that people have but lack of understanding that when it is happiness it is the brahman only that is the problem so that's why when a, a, a sattvic thoughts arises in the mind the mind becomes a calm and serene and that is the time one is happy also how do you get happiness by having number one a calm serene contented mind because it says that the shanti means it is contented and by itself there is no longing mind wanting mind desiring mind then the mind gets agitated so it is a calm quiet state of mind is what shanta that is peaceful and peaceful is the mind where the, the consciousness gets automatically reflected sukhan chapadibimbati says the the happiness automatically gets reflected and that state of mind is always happy so how to be always happy i'm going to give a talk series on the always happy so how to be always happy you can have to be sadananda <laughs> i'm not talking about so yes ananda means always happy how by having a mind which is serene peaceful and compassionate mind unperturbed mind and they the reflection of shanti and reflection of the happiness always occurs and if i have the knowledge that happiness is my own reflection that becomes a atma vidya sukham ja pradibhim so reflected happiness reflected consciousness reflected existence and from the reflection i have to see the original that is the knowledge now so reflection it's not the lack of reflection it is the lack of understanding that whenever something is reflecting i have to recognize the original so this is called a bimba pratibimbam using the mirror and using the face that i see the mirror i have to adjust my face i cannot adjust and correct the 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 pratibimba if some black spot on the face then i look at the mirror and then i see black spot then if i had remove the black spot i cannot rub the mirror i have to remove the original one same way i have to recognize the losing reflection i have to recognize the original consciousness the original happiness original existence that i am that is the knowledge that is the abiding in the knowledge so utteshu utteshvesasu sarvasu brahmana chit swabhavatah it is of the nature of pure consciousness and that is in all exhibited in all rutti so hence keno parisha says this is pratibodha viditam matam it is known in every thought because consciousness plus thought is coming so if i shift my attention from the thought to the consciousness that i am and that consciousness that i am is that shifting of attention can occur only when i have a sattvic mind and the sattvic mind becomes a a mind where shanta is also there so we go into more details so this is a a a, a a sadhana chapter also and this is the wrapping of the chapter also and this is how one has to shift attention from local happiness to the global happiness all that is involved in this with this we stop here om purnamada purnamidam 
पूर्णत्पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवा वसिष्यते ओं शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरुभ्यो नम हरि ओ